Hello and welcome to Legends of Runeterra Freaks Cup number 2 hosted by a Freak of TV. My name is Boulevard. Here we are getting right into the action in a Group A Top 4 match between Lufacile and One Magical Day. Apologize for any Google Translate or just my own pronunciation issues. Now, this tournament's a little bit different than what we've been seeing in North America and Europe. Normally we see a best of three conquest region locked format where you get to ban one of your opponent's decks. That's not going to be the case here. This weekend, these players only brought two decks and there were no bans, meaning these players could play any powerful deck that they wanted to, as we see with One Magical Day getting started off with the Karma Heimerdinger, a deck that we consistently see in winning lineups from North America and Europe as we saw in the winning lineups from both I believe it was Europe and North America of Duels of Runeterra 7. Both of them had a Karma Heim, both of them had it banned out consistently so makes sense that one magical day is going to bring it here in a format where it can't get banned out and we actually get to see this deck in action for once. I feel like we haven't gotten to see it too too much since the Elixir of Brilliance ban. Obviously it's still coming in in lineups but it's getting banned out but anyway back to the game at hand. These players both starting off rather slowly, as to be expected in a Karina Control versus Heimer, Heimer Karma matchup. Now, I would expect Karma Heim to be favored, as the refuel potential of Heimerdinger does make him pretty uh, resilient to board wipes, even though he still gets to consistently go wide. It's going to be a bit of a problem before the Heimer upgrades and things like Vile Feast and... Uh, Withering Whale are still getting a lot of value. In the meantime, we're going to see these two fight over a Solitary Monk. Twin Disciplines and Grasp of the Undying used makes sense. Uh, Solitary Monk can get in a lot of early damage, and while there is a lot of healing in Lufusil's deck, uh, it's still difficult to remove it and actually mitigate some of that damage for three very powerful units. So I'm going to Vile Feast it to get on the aggressive, maybe just soften it up a bit, go for one of these Mystic Shots. Look like that will be the case in a top deck Heimerdinger. Uh, gonna be really safe to play this actually once this mystic shot gets fired off It's gonna take the vengeance off the turn Which means you don't need to hold deny mana as you do still have the twin disciplines of your own to protect it from another grasp the undying or something like that So this mystic shot is actually really gonna play against Lufus heal thanks to this Heimerdinger top deck from one magical day Be surprised if one magical day went to defend this As getting the Heimer down seems pretty good to me and unless Lufus Hill goes for a double Mystic Shot, looks like One Magical Day is going to be able to float a lot of mana into this next turn with it. And not going to go for the Mystic Shot. We'll just be the Skitterer trying to get a little aggressive. However, this Burst Speed spell does mean an MK3 turret gets to come down. Not sure if he's going to use it to block the Skitterer or if he's just going to want to go on the aggressive. I would assume he's going to go on the aggressive with it. You know, it makes a little bit more sense. Your opponent's actually pretty low on cards, and you have a lot of defensive tools in your own hand. The Unlicensed Innovation might even come in big here. Uh, no board wipes on the side of Lufusil outside of Karina, which probably won't get denied. I would imagine the Vengeance will come down before that does, so this Heimer could actually get cleaned up unless the Twin Disciplines can be saved for that turn. We'll just be an attack out. Wouldn't be too surprised to see a Mystic Shot. There's nothing for two mana that can really harm this Heimerdinger. Getting down the 2-1 turret definitely doesn't sound too bad. There's not a lot to Mystic Shot in this matchup other than your opponent's face. And if you want to try and get down some aggressive damage with the Heimer turrets and then finish your opponent off with some Karma Burn, very reasonable strategy against a deck like this, especially with one Grasp of the Undying already out of the way. A block from the Heimerdinger would be uh, mighty ambitious in my opinion, especially if you're taking yourself off of that Twin Discipline mana. Yep, will be the Mystic Shot down onto the Skitterer. Gonna give one Magical Day an MK2 Tough Turret, which will just run over that spider once it loses the Skitterer buff. Solitary Monk, probably the worst top deck for one Magical Day here. It's it's past its prime here now that the Heimer's out. It does give a nice backup win condition if things don't work out here, but the Mystic Shot, gonna come down. Gonna have to assume that's gonna be in conjunction with the Withering Whale. Not going to play them both at the same time as One Magical Day does have to use a defensive tool here to protect the Heimerdinger. Perhaps thinking of the Deny or just a Mystic Shot of their own onto the Spider. Mystic Shot seems a little bit safer. Deny definitely not one you want to throw down there. Yeah, Mystic Shot's probably the safest play as it is an, a defensive tool in this case, uh, which it's generally not. Generally, you know, it's just used to 
as forms of removal or to burn your opponent down once you have the karma out. So actually getting to use it defensively here feels pretty good. And then this Withering Whale could get denied. It's more likely that we see the Twin Disciplines, I think, unless One Magical Day really wants to push through this MK3 turret. Will just be the Twin Discipline onto the Heimerdinger. So two damage still going to come through at Lufusil thanks to this tough turret surviving as well as two more turrets in their hand. Boop, boop, there go the mystic shots, there goes the turrets. And of course, that's gonna tie it up at 18 to 18. Now, more elusive and tough turrets coming down. Mystic shot mana for Lufusil, but not a whole lot to do with it as that Heim does survive with a magical three health. And another mystic shot picked up for, for, Lu uh, for one magical day, rather. Mystic Shot Mayhem over here in Korea. It's going to be the Vile Feast down onto the MK3 turret. The Floor Be Gone. Going to be a pretty value play out of that one. Static Shock? Yeah, that... I definitely like it over the Unlicensed... Actually, I don't know if I like it over the Unlicensed Innovation. I guess getting a 4-mana turret. I think this upgrades the Heimerdinger anyway. As well as getting the draw off. Pretty valuable, so... I guess getting the spider off board makes the most sense. If you went for the unlicensed innovation, then you'd probably be forced to follow up with a mystic shot because the 5-5 is just going to get blocked out by the spider. However, 6-1 turret seems pretty valuable to me. Static shock, completely fine play. Totally understand it. Digging a little bit deeper. And the Heimer upgrade does mean that future withering whales and vile feasts are going to be a lot less valuable. This is kind of the point that you wanted to get to. Mystic shot, probably not a lot of reason to protect this 4-1 here. Definitely don't want to use deny on it. Uh, and, of course, the Elixir of Brilliance now will create a 4-2 Elusive Turret. Going to be very valuable, especially with this Karina coming down next turn. That's probably where the Deny is going to go. So, a little uh, unfortunate here for Lufusil that they weren't able to get the Vengeance down to bait out the Deny before this Karina comes down to actually wipe the board. Dawn and Dusk, we've seen this bug out with Heimerdinger before, so <laughs> I have to keep a close eye on how that actually interacts out here. Looking at the Overwhelm turret, thinking of just going for it here, however, would not be able to play the Overwhelm turret as this would fill up one Magical Day's board. Perhaps thinking of just using it on the floor be gone on the next turn. Definitely like that play a bit more. <laughs> we'll then give Lufusil the chance to go for- oh! Well, with six mana, yeah, your opponent really doesn't have anything that could kill the Heimerdinger other than a Thermogenic Beam. But at this point, your board is so powerful, you don't really care if they Thermo Beam the Heim, uh, as long as you can prevent a board wipe or something next turn. And we'll just be floating the spell, man. And nothing else to do on the side of Lufusil is just going to have to pray that this Vengeance finds the right target on this open attack. And of course, it will not. Haven't run the numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like uh, this... Get Excited will actually save the day then as one magical day only as a mystic shot and Lufusil will go down to three if this 7-2 dies, which it almost certainly will. Uh, vengeance, or sorry, Deny rather, pretty likely to come out onto the Vengeance here, probably going to be followed up by that Get Excited. Hard pressed to imagine Lufusil just not wanting to win the game here. Uh, and it's going to have to be Ladros discard. You need that Karina to try and wipe out this board and get yourself back into this game. And if that happens, which it looks like it will... Uh, there's not a whole lot that One Magical Day can do about that. They can get down the Solitary Monk on the following turn and hope that that gets there, which, honestly, it might. Lufusil playing off the top deck here. With a Hand of Slow Spells, though, there won't be enough turrets coming down to overwhelm it on their own, but that'll do it, actually. Well, here we're going to see... The Karina come out. Might see Mystic Shot into Lufusil's face to get the 2-1 Tough Turret. And just build a board of Solitary Monk, the Tough Turret, and the Chempunk Pickpocket. Go for some open attacks next turn just to play around the most amount of removal that Lufusil could possibly have. A little unfortunate now that uh, all these slow spells are stacked up in the hand, but it looks like this is going to be one magical day picking up game number one here. Of course, there is still the chance that Karina does miss, at least on the 5-5. Five five, it's pretty likely that it's going to at least kill the Heimerdinger. Oh my gosh, that is... That is the 
biggest whiff I've ever seen on Karina, and nothing dies. That is so unfortunate for Lufusil. Don't think this game was going on much longer anyway, but ooh, that's a that's a tilter if I've ever seen one. All right, everyone, we are here in game number two, top four of the Freaks Cup number two, Group A. Luface looks like they dropped the L for game number two here versus uh, what Google Translate told me is one magical day. Going to be switching over to Endure Spiders versus Karina Control. As previously mentioned, this is not your typical three deck conquest. It is two deck conquest, meaning there were no bans. So these players both brought what they thought were the most powerful decks in the format. It looks like one magical day picked Endure Spiders and Karma Heimerdinger. So going to see how this matchup gets underway. Looks like a pretty mirrored opening from the players here. Uh, Withering Whale, Brute Awakening, and some spiders in both of their hands. They who endure a pretty good pickup here in the opener from One Magical Day, though, as uh, Lou Fa Face, rather, as I'm going to call them for the rest of this match, I believe, uh, has a lot of removal for the spiders coming out. Going to be able to build up the They Who Endure pretty quickly, and there's no vengeance or clean way so far to deal with that They Who Endure if it wants to come down and just start swinging. Second Brood Awakening picked up. Now, the Elise on two does mean that no Brood Awakening can come out of face here. Uh, meanwhile, on the side of One Magical Day, could play the Brood Awakening, but I think I like the Skitterer more here if you're going to develop a board. He's not any good attacks from the Brood Awakening. If you swing out, you're getting traded on by the Elise and the 1-1. One -one. Of course, face has that backup Elise to counter out the Vile Feast even, so if you're trying to push damage, I like the Skitterer better. Of course, the Mystic Shot is in Face's hand. We'll just scan that one out right away, but... Not going to eat up any of Face's other plays for the turn, as that is literally the only one. And, of course, no way to get the Elise Evolution off because the Crawling Sensation can't come down without something dying. And you need everything alive for that Elise Evolution. So, going to see how One Magical Day wants to handle this one. Looks like pretty torn between the Brood Awakening and the Skitterer. I don't mind Brood Awakening pass and then a Skitterer aggressively on the following turn, but the Skitterer going to come down straight away. I like this one a little bit more. I like pushing the damage. Uh, of course, we'll just be snuffed out by that Mystic Shot. Nothing on the side of One Magical Day to do about that. It's just going to be a pretty clean one-for-one -one trade. So now Face gets the open attacks. Instead, going to go for the Brood Awakening. Uh, there's a couple of options from One Magical Day. They could Withering Whale. They could defensively Brood Awakening and get down their own Elise. Uh, if they really wanted to, they could just play their Brood Awakening, play their Elise, and just trade Elise Evolutions, knowing that they have the Withering Whale to clean up the board on the following turn. Looks like it will be the Elise coming down, at least. Of course, Withering Whale... Makes the most sense if you're not going for Brood Awakening first. Yeah, the, the Withering Well, or the Elise upgrade trade is kind of a pipe dream. I don't think you can really afford to eat this much damage, especially in a deck with it, as much burn in it as the Karina control. So definitely prefer the Withering Well. Looks like throwing out the Elise is a blocker just to make sure that nothing's crazy is coming out there. Gonna hover the Crawling Sensation. I definitely like not playing it and instead holding the secondary Elise. Especially since you have the second Brood Awakening to go for another upgrade on her. If your Elise gets killed in response, I would definitely like to have that second Elise rather than a couple of 1-1 spiders. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be Brood Awakening? There's a bit of a delay. Okay, yeah, there's going to be the Brood Awakening on the side of one magical day. Now, we're probably just going to see a Brood Awakening trade from face, and then it's up to whether or not One Magical Day wants to attack and risk trading off these Elises or these Spiders. I like at least an Elise attack. The pass from face is a little concerning to me, as there don't actually seem to be any good attacks on the side of One Magical Day, unless he wanted to attack with all three of his two ones, but then he doesn't get the Elise upgrade. Instead, one Magical Day going to float Face's turn and upgrade the Elise. Definitely think that was a bit of a misstep on the side of Face, but we're going to move right past that one. I like this open attack because the only thing that can trade onto this Elise here is One Magical Day's Elise, and he doesn't have a backup like Face does. Brood Awakening would have been okay, but I'm not convinced that you would have attacked with them. I think I'd rather go for some cleanup duty on these spiders. Actually, I don't I don't hate Brood Awakening and then on One Magical Day's turn going for the mass removal and the Withering Whale. 
Definitely like to get my own board set up first before I start chipping away at my opponents. Especially if I can chip away at them at fast speed. We'll be a block lined up by one magical day here. Still a little bit of time to take that back if they want to. And it's going to be locked in. So that's going to be three damage. Putting one magical day down to uh, just 75% life here down to the 14. Against Karina, that's a little bit scary. The Ladros already in Face's hand for that turn 9, just ready and waiting. Not sure how big this Day Who Endure is, and that's going to be the Brood Awakening from One Magical Day. Would love to see a Brood Awakening response out of Face here. Instead, going to go for the Withering Whale, deciding to use it effectively at slow speed to clear out all of these spiders. Gain no life as Face is already at 20, and then... Okay, going to be Mystic Shot coming out. I definitely... Would have, prefer, would have preferred, rather, to see the board set up and the Elise upgrade out of face. Gets a little bit awkward to play the Brood Awakening from here on out, I think. And the Karina picked up as well. Feeling pretty good about that. Not sure how big this Day Who Endure is, but I do know that a lot of units have died on the side of one magical day. At least two Brood Awakenings and Elise and a Skitterer. I think that's it. So somewhere, it's, I believe it's under 10. If I've done my math correctly, it's around somewhere between 8 and 10. <laughs> what are we getting started with here? Going to be a Vile Feast onto the Elise. That's the other thing, actually. If, if Face had waited to do the Withering Whale play on One Magical Day's turn, he would have floated the attack step of One Magical Day as he wouldn't have had a board. He would have had to open swing. You clear the board in response. Now they don't have an attack step. So here, One Magical Day actually going to get a push through with this 1-1. One -one, says your Elise can't block it. And Wallface probably going to use this Static Shock to clear it out. That's not necessarily going to take Brood Awakening off the board, but be a little surprised to see it come out at this point. Will be the Glimpse Beyond coming down in response. Looks like it'll be a, an Elise and a Mist Wraith picked up. So the Mist Wraith telling us that One Magical Day is on the Wraith Caller build of this deck. So if it's the standard build that we generally see, it's going to be one Trindamir and two They Who Endure as the only Freljord cards, which means that we are halfway through the They Who Endures of the deck. File Feast coming out in response to the Brood Awakening, saying no Elise upgrade for you this turn. And it looks like Face is just having trouble getting this Elise upgraded where I really don't feel like they should have. Had a couple of opportunities, you know, the floated turn 5, the slow speed withering whale. Well. Definitely not been liking some of the plays from Face this turn, but, or this game rather, but I do like this open attack. Nothing else to get done this turn unless you wanted to go for an Elise upgrade, but I really don't know how much of a difference it makes at this point in the game. Your next turn is when you're going to start going for... Ladrosses and Karinas, so maybe it would have been worth it, you know, get the Elise down, get the Fearsome off, say your Wraith Caller, or your Mist Wraith and your 1-1s one can't block, but it looks like Face is going to highly... The, the only thing I can think of is that Face is being extremely conscious of their own life total, trying to stay as absolutely close to 20 as possible, and it will be they who endure coming down as a 12-12. Which means 24 damage when combined with Atrocity. So, Face would survive that, but it's not even picked up yet on One Magical Day's side. Gonna be the Elise block, makes sense. Gonna put him down to 8. Does pick up a Thermo Beam to deal with it, where previously he did not have an answer. Has a couple of options. Uh, could see the Ladros come down this turn and attack. As a way to soften up this... Uh, it's they who endure. Looks like the combat phase is already over and the units have just failed to return to the bench. We're going to call that one a visual bug. Grasp of the Undying onto the Mist Wraith here would definitely be weird if we are out of combat like I think we are. Looks like it's going to be Grasp onto the They Who Endure. Atrocity does end the game here, so with that play, you know your opponent doesn't have it. I would like to see the... Le now there's nothing else that can come down now. You could still Thermo Beam to finish it off. Will instead be the second Grasp of the Undying coming down onto this They Who Endure. Which means we're setting up for Karina. I don't hate this necessarily. It's definitely not a play that I was expecting, but gotta respect the player. So... 13 to 14 the life totals now. Definitely a pretty big swing on the side of face. 
First down to eight, now up to 14. Going to be a glimpse beyond onto the Mistwraith, perhaps just digging for this atrocity to end the game. Uh, now faces Karina came up really small, as small as I've ever seen a Karina came up in game number one, only dealing one damage to board and face. Didn't really have an impact on the outcome, but have to assume he's going to get lucky here and high roll the five, right? It's not. Even, I feel like it's not even really a high roll. Like, that's just kind of what you expect. That's what you build the deck around. Uh, four is a pretty safe assumption on what you're going to hit. If we do see another one uh, come down here, though, at least has the thermo beam to finish it off. And once this They Who Endure dies, I feel like the game goes back into Face's favor once they can kind of clean up some of the spiders from One Magical Day. I mean, nothing in response, and it... Ooh, only three coming through. Does set it up to die to the Withering Will, though, which is uh, better than having to Thermo Beam it. But a pretty unlucky Karina on the side of face again. That card just really not doing what he wants it to in this matchup. It's going to be the Skitterer coming down first on the side of One Magical Day. Would assume the Elise is going to be paired with it. Thermo Beam going to be used to finish off They Who Endure. Seems like... Face has already made the read that One Magical Day doesn't have Atrocity and very much wants to get this off the field before they can top deck it. So badly, in fact, that they're not just going to save the Withering Whale for it. So just very, very afraid of this Atrocity top deck. Would have preferred to see the Thermo Beam come down onto the Skitterer myself and following up with the Withering Whale, but I can at least understand the thought process. Now, the top deck Atrocity wouldn't kill Face, but... It is still a massive life swing, and with two Grasp of the Undying gone, Face is running out of healing, but once these uh, once these spiders can get off the board, uh, I do think Face is favored since they have the Ladross. Will be a Vengeance down onto Karina, and a free block onto the 1-1. One -one. The 1-1 one -one attack uh, makes a bit of sense, you know. It's not a very good blocker since your opponent has fearsome units. Every spider will be fearsome thanks to the Elise coming out. You have no answer for that. You could ruination post-combat. Although I think I like the Ladross a bit better. Actually, thinking, really thinking about it, I think I would have liked ruination on this turn, followed by Ladross attack on the following turn. Not going to be the case, though, and understandable that you would kind of get blown out by your opponent making a big board, but you have the Brood Awakening to deal with that, so actually, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to stick with that. I would have liked to see Ruination come out here and the Dross attack on the following turn. Of course, based on the player's hands, we know that would have worked out pretty well for Face, but I think even with your opponent just having a three-card hand, uh, two Brood Awakening down, I think this is the second at least, the second, sk second or third Skitterer, you know, your opponent just really doesn't have a lot of gas left in the tank. Will be the box to soften up the Ladross. And the Atrocity picked up. Not enough damage to end the game yet. It will be the Ladross attack met out by this Frenzied Skitter. It does mean Ladross will probably just come back down straight away. Put one Magical Day down to two. And then it only takes a Mystic Shot or get excited off the top for Face to win game number two here. Does pass without playing the Ladross, without doing anything even. And it looks like that is going to be game number two going to one magical day as they pick up They Who Endure off the top. Ruination going to come down, but that's not going to do anything in response to this atrocity. And yeah, one magical day going to pick this one up. Face understanding the seven mana is there. That's going to be your top four of group A. Uh, looks like one magical day will be advancing to the finals from here. 